This video is about FHA loans. Whether you're using an FHA loan to buy your first house, your first primary residence, or you're using it to house hack and get involved in multifamily investing, an FHA loan can be a great way to open the door for you and it's a lot lower barrier of entry for you. It can really help accelerate the process and get you started. However, there are some things to know as far as requirements and what is needed for you to get approved for an FHA loan. And so that is what we're gonna talk about in this video and I think it'll be super helpful if you're wondering about FHA loans. Okay, so you'll need a credit score of 580 or above if you're planning on putting 3.5% down. However, if your credit score is between 500 and 580, you can still use an FHA loan as long as you put 10% down. Okay, so the next thing you'll need is a steady income source or proof of employment. And something to keep in mind is if you're a tip earner, if you may be a waitress or you cut hair or some sort of profession that you collect tips, if you're not claiming those tips, it could, it could hurt you in the approval process because those wages aren't being reported on your annual income, meaning you could qualify for less. So something to keep in mind, if you're looking to buy a primary residence using an FHA loan or get involved in house hacking, um, maybe think about claiming your tips to make sure that you can get approved for the, type of, for the um, property of value that you want to get approved for. The next requirement for an FHA loan is a debt to income ratio less than 43%. So you're going to want to talk to your lender about this. You, basically, your lender will run a credit check and also take your W-2s and other um, sources of income and calculate your debt to income ratio. And as long as it's less than 43%, you'll meet that requirement for an FHA loan and you'll be good to go. That's all part of the pre-qualification process for getting an FHA loan when you're reaching out to different lenders and trying to shop for the best rates. Okay, so the next thing that goes along with having an FHA loan is mortgage insurance, your MIP, your mortgage insurance premium. And so you pay this in two ways. You pay it up front at closing, and then you also pay it monthly. And basically the reason you have this is because since you're putting so low money down compared to conventional financing, you have less skin in the game, so you're more of a risk to the bank. And so the way that is basically covered is through you paying an additional mortgage insurance premium every month and up front. So for example, if you're buying a $200,000 property, your upfront mortgage insurance premium is gonna be 1.75% of the loan, meaning you'd pay $3,500 additionally upfront at closing. And then you also pay monthly for your mortgage insurance premium, and that's for the life of the loan, if you're putting 3.5% down. However, if you put 10% down, your MIP could fall off after 11 years, but most people who use an FHA loan um, put 3.5% down, because that's so awesome to be able to bring that low money down to the table. So your mortgage insurance premium will be tacked on for the life of the loan and that's just something to keep in mind when running the numbers to make sure your deal is going to actually be profitable. Another awesome pro about FHA loans is that they typically have a lot better interest rates than conventional loans and the reason for that is because it's insured by the, by the government, it's a federally insured loan and so you are able to get a lot more competitive interest rate and with that can help so much when running the numbers because if you think about it, if you're paying more in monthly um, and uh, mortgage insurance premium every month, but you're paying less in interest rates, low, lower money down, you want these costs to kind of offset. That way your numbers can be as profitable as they can. So that's just all things to factor in. But if you shop around and look at interest rates on a day-to-day -day level, your FHA loan interest rates should be a lot lower than the conventional rates out there. Okay, so another requirement is that you must live in the residence for at least one year. That is a requirement from FHA that you must make this your primary residence and live in it for at least one year and they will check on that through tax returns and um, credit checks and things like that. So don't commit um, housing fraud. You have to live in there for one year before you can move or rent out your unit or whatever you're thinking of doing. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, you're tied down there for a year. That's just a requirement. After that you can you can move and if you have 25% equity in the property, you can you know, cash out, refinance to another conventional loan and then use your FHA loan again to repeat the process. Okay, so also FHA is much more strict on appraisal and on inspection. So an FHA appraiser is not gonna approve the underwriting of your FHA loan if there are things wrong with the property like heaters don't work or there's broken windows or there is plumbing issues. It'll, they'll approve cosmetic issues, but you can't go buy like a flipper foreclosure house with an FHA loan because the FHA loan is not interested in your investing like strategy or whether it's a good price. Your FHA inspector is trying to protect the first time home buyer from going into a catastrophe money pit. So they have a lot more 
um, strict guidelines rather than like if you're using conventional financing you can go buy a house that was basically ripped down to studs and rehab it yourself an FHA loan you won't be able to do that so the property has to be in a lot better condition um, there are uh, certain types of FHA loans a 203k which allow for renovation and rehab that's a whole different thing there's a whole different set of requirements for that but for a traditional FHA loan it's got to be it's got to pass the inspection from an FHA appraiser and so keep that in mind when looking at properties and you know don't don't uh, put in for one that's all destroyed because an FHA appraiser is not going to approve that and lastly it must appraise for the for the actual buying price or an FHA loan if let's say for example you're buying a two hundred thousand dollar property but it only appraises for hundred and eighty thousand I mean this is pretty standard for all financing but um, for, they're either going to tell you no and decline the loan during the underwriting or they're going to ask you to bring a lot more down to the table at closing so that's just something to keep in mind so when running your numbers running um, you know uh, comparison specs of similar properties throughout the neighborhood for an FHA loan and most um, conventional loans it's got to be very close to the um, the appraisal has to be very close to the buying price so that's just something to keep in mind okay so all in all an FHA loan can be a great great start to either real estate investing or getting your first home low money down the ability to bring a lower credit score to the table there are some trade-offs with uh, your monthly insurance premium your private mortgage insurance and the mortgage insurance premium that you pay up front and um, the fact that you have to live there for a year and that you can't buy a total fixer-upper house there are things like that but if you can find the right property using an FHA loan can seriously fast track your um, ability to get into real estate investing or buying your first home because just being able to bring that much less money down and the credit score um, basically requirements it makes it so much more accessible to most people and it's very powerful because rather than having to save up 25% down to get started you can get started with 3.5% down it's a great strategy I hope the requirements were helpful um, if you have any questions about these post them in the comments or put suggestions and I'll make another video if this was uh, valuable to you please like subscribe and comment uh, I really appreciate it and we'll see you in the next video thank you